Hi everybody, Army P here for Explorminate, and welcome to my Let's Play of Stellaris with the new expansion Megacorp installed. Now, if you're looking at the title screen, watching me play, you're probably thinking, well, geez, this looks like the title screen from Apocalypse, and you are correct. Um, this is the first time that Paradox, to my knowledge anyway, has released a DLC that doesn't change this background, and I was a little surprised by that myself. Uh, I am playing on the review copy, of the review build right now, uh, it uh, so this might actually change when it actually releases on December 6th but for the time being I assure you if you're looking at the screen and you're thinking to yourself oh the background didn't change you're as shocked as I am now there is a lot to go over very uh, in this next few episodes about the economy changes and I've had the chance to play it for about mm, seven hours or so and I can say without a doubt that my seven hours were spent full of interesting and meaningful decisions versus chasing down bugs. Now, not to say that they're not out there, but there is a couple of oddities that I encountered, but for the most part, mwah, good to go. So, without further ado, we asked our Exporminators at Patreon uh, who would be our rival. Now, it would kind of make sense to play as a corporate entity since it, it, we do have the DLC for Megacorp installed, but I'll explain the reason why. You can see here that uh, the corporate um, authority gives you the opportunity to play with some pretty cool civics. But the, one of the things I didn't like was the Empire size penalty is 50%. Now, it's no longer based off of the amount of planets that you have, but the amount of districts that you build. So what happens is the entire idea behind playing as a corporation is one based on playing tall. And in my previous game that I played off screen, I did play as a corporate and I thought it was awesome. And there are a lot of really cool, interesting mechanics, especially with branch offices that you can aspire to. But unfortunately, you're so hindered by the penalties for going over your uh, empire size cap that it kind of made for more of an interesting experience versus an interesting viewing pleasure. So therefore, I decided to make a couple of interesting empires that we as Exploraminators will go up against in a game. And without uh, with a f the votes that we got, Star Mart won, and I base this heavily on another Mart that you might be aware of. Uh, Star Mart is a um, empire that uh, sells you the products at the lowest prices in the galaxy, and it might be some of the products on the cheaper side of the scale. They are a corporate entity, uh, they have a brand loyalty which gives them more 15% uh, unity and they are free traders allowing for trade value plus 10% and branch office value plus 10%. So these are the two civics that are going to be exclusive for the corporate entity if you get the Megacorp DLC. Uh, I made them fanatic xenophile, and the reason behind that of course is because they want to be able to sell everybody and anybody the cheapest goods in the entire galaxy. And uh, the, I made the pacifist because I can't imagine Star Mart wanting to go to war with anybody. So that being said, we're also including several of our alien races that we had built by our Exploraminate members from our previous Let's Play, which was Apocalypse. So you're probably going to recognize some of these as I go through them. I had to change some of their traits because as you may not, as I'm pretty sure you know if you've read any of the patch notes for 2.2, a lot of the traits have changed. Um, and how they've changed is directly involved in how the entire economy's changed. But we'll go over that in, in general. But these are the ones that we are going to be up against in this game. Um, some of them have great, I, I kept them in my game just because they have such great backgrounds. I, I give kudos to our Experminate family for creating them including the ice machine empire made by ice mania yeah so in total i think i have 11 let's see here what do i got i got one two three four five six seven eight nine nine i think is where we're gonna sit so i actually will flood the empire i think i'll only choose nine and i'm gonna choose uh for our playing purposes we're gonna be the explormination we play as representative democracy. We are, civics are the um, parliamentary system, which gives us more um, influence for our factions. And Byzantine bureaucracy, which um, reduces our pop amenity usage and housing usage. 
We're going to do e fanatic egalitarian because everybody at Exploraminate here, you know, we're one big happy family and we want everybody to be involved. And we're a xenophile, or we're, we're all equal, I should say, and a xenophile because we want everybody to be friends with us. We're not going to hold any grudges. Uh, Exploraminate rises to the top, so that's what we're going to do. So we are going to play on a medium elliptical with nine empires. Uh, well, two, two Fallen Empires. I always choose one Marauder just because that's always what I do. We're going to go uh, Habitable World 1. This is a um, Victory Year. We'll explain this a little bit later, but the Victory Year is 2,500. I'm pretty sure you can play past that, but with the new Victory Score, we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's actually interesting. Um, difficulty, I'm going to play on Let's Go Admiral with Scaling. Uh, if you don't know what that is, basically they, the M, the AI starts with no bonuses, and then over the course of the game, they will eventually get full-scale Admiral bonuses, which are massive. Everything else pre seems pretty standard. We're going to turn off um, our Iron Man mode. Guaranteed Habitable Worlds, which is one of the new sliders, is great. Um... In previous versions, you never were guaranteed to have a, ha a habitable world around your star, and then they changed it. And I can't remember what version it was, but um, you can adjust this now so that it, you're not guaranteed any worlds around you that are habitable. And we'll get into how habitability has changed, because I don't think there's a, a single part of habitability colonization. Jeez. Um, the economy. Anything is going on. Okay, so where are we starting here? All right, looks like we're kind of in the center of the lower southern end of the star, which is fine. Now, I'm just going to start playing, and I'm going to start shooting the breeze as we go along, because it is there's so much to talk about, I don't want to bore you, so we're just going to dive right in. You know what, just one second. Thank you. All right, so uh, a lot of the research has changed so you can see here research station output research physics but uh, researchers has changed um, I'm gonna say research sta uh, research station output seems like a good choice because we're gonna be of course expanding pretty um, pretty heavily to begin with and we're gonna say do the same thing with our society and where else we're we gonna do civilian fabricators ooh we'll get into that later okay here we go I'm going to get my science ship. Where should we start? I always like going west, so we'll get him surveying. And you'll look up at the top of the screen and think to yourself, wow, has the UI changed? And it certainly has. So looks like we've got um, minerals are going to be fine, but we're going to want to get our energy up. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what? Army P, I play this game a lot. You always go for minerals and you don't now anymore. Now the reason I say that, and I'm just going to get it on normal speed to kind of get going while we're talking. You've got districts now. Now the districts are kind of what your um, empire size is based off of, not your planets anymore. And I've, as the hours I've played in it and read the dev diaries, there were a lot of different things that I was kind of confused about, or maybe I shouldn't say confused. They were uh, not very clear. The best way I can put it is, city districts provide you with housing, and the three different ones, so that's a generator district, your mining district, and your agriculture district, are all base resources, okay? Now those base resources, for the most part, aside from food, which of course can be used for different things now besides just your, you know, your population consuming it, are used to create other um, manufactured resources and then those resources can be manufactured even further to f using exotic resources so minerals although they used to be the king and base all of building everything and you still will build a lot in space an example would be that we just built um, our first um, energy credits mining station around that gas giant but inside the actual um, the buildings that you use here will use uh, minerals to make the different higher-end manufactured ones. So those high-end manufactured ones are consumer goods and alloys, and then, of course, your research. So you actually need to manufacture... Um, uh, re I believe research stations, you have to con make consumer goods for minerals. The consumer goods are used by your research stations to generate research. And then of course the byproduct of using that is also 
that it creates jobs. So now you're thinking to yourself, okay, if that wasn't too terribly confusing, keep following me along here. Your population is broken off into different jobs, and those jobs are rulers, specialists, and workers. Now you can break these down even further, like you've got artisans, medicurists, researchers, etc., right? So what you do is your buildings will actually create jobs that will be used to manufacture your base resources into manufactured resources. Follow me? Here we go. So an example would be if I wanted to make a mining district. Oh, we discovered alien life here. Um, well, let's check that out. Did we get a planet right off the bat? We did. And it's a 15 world. Ooh, wow. We'll get back to that later. That's a good, good find. So in this case and scenario, you can see here that if I decided to build a mining district, it tells us we got, it'll make two housing and it'll make two minor jobs. Miners, not like you're hiring children. And that will go under your worker category. So you're like, okay, sounds good in the hood, right? Great. So it will create work uh, jobs that will be filled by your population as they start to grow. And they will fulfill those jobs automatically. Now, what we can do is, and we don't have the resources yet, they, they tend to stack up pretty quickly, but we can use an example would be an uh, alloy foundry. Now, the alloy foundry will create and will make a metagurlist, <laughs> uh, well, he works with metals, and that will be a specialist job. And you can see here that they are here, they, they work with the metals and they make the alloys. So they convert 12 of the minerals into alloys. And alloys are needed to make everything in space, space stations, your spaceships, um, and a lot of different upgrades and things like of that nature. So if I go back to Habitable World Survey, yes, I will, of course. And I wanted to put that down. It would create two jobs that would do that and it'd be filled automatically by my pops. So it's pretty straightforward and it's... Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, won't lie, like uh, when you first kind of, you know, jump into it, you're thinking, oh man, I'm a little lost. But I would say that the way that they've done the layout, and additionally they've upgraded the tutorial, it's done in a way that um, I didn't find it too terribly difficult. It's a little daunting at first, but it can be, it, you end up catching up pretty quick. So in this particular case, um, geez, what I want to do? I think I actually will build uh, a once I get the money I'm actually gonna build a mining district because I want to get my minerals up because that's another thing that you'll notice is that oh no maybe why I don't I think this planet oh, it's a generator yeah so what you'll notice is that unless you constantly feed your economy with the base resources you'll never produce enough of the um, manufactured ones which can be a little bit of a kicker in the pants so let's speed things up a little bit and continue with our survey. Now, another cool thing, and I'm pretty sure if you guys have watched. Uh, let's see here. If you've watched the Dev Diaries, you can actually click on any one of the resources and you go into the internal market. Now, the internal market exists until the galactic market kicks off, and the galactic market kind of kicks off at a point when you've developed uh, a certain number of people of empires have all been discovered and what you can do is by clicking on any one of the ones that you want to say I want minerals you can say, um, spend 130 energy credits for 100 minerals and at a market fee of 30 percent this is great because you can buy any one of the base resources and including some manufactured at certain costs so it doesn't mean it means that even though your economy wax and wane uh, under the stress of a growing population that has higher demands throughout the entire your entire game, you'll never be um, crippled one way or the other by not having one more resource now that the galactic market is there. I think we are going to get a science ship, and I think we have enough to afford a second one. Of course, that tactic has not changed since the beginning of Stellaris, like literally you know, 1.1 or 1.2. Okay, we got our science ship up and running. Let's see if we can a leader. Um, 200 energy credits. I'm good to go. 
Uh, anomaly research speed 35%. That's pretty much obvious choice. And we will go, uh, I think we'll go south and then we'll head to the east and we'll see what we've, we're going to discover. Looks like we've got at least one habitable world near our planet. This is actually going to be, um, I mean, a generator district. This, you can see here, I'll leave that be for now. An example would be, so we just found this new planet here. It's got a total of 10 districts. Every time you choose a district, it, it counts on your against your district number that it can hold, right? An example would be here. Uh, my planet size is 18. Uh, I have some planet features, which means I've got some blocks, uh, industrial wasteland, and stuff like that that I have to clear off, sprawls, things like that. And they actually add to the total amount. And... It basically lets me know that out of the 18, I eventually start filling them up. And as I start filling up these districts, what will happen is, and I'll build a mining district right now to kind of illustrate, it'll take away from that total, meaning that you can't completely maximize all of these. You have to kind of make your decisions about how you're going to customize your planet. And then, of course, customize your your how it will uh, augment your economy. It seems to me, anyway, that it's actually... Ooh, that's nice too. Uh, comet cited. It seems to me anyway that it makes a lot of sense for you to create very customized planets that will uh, help your economy along because there are some planets that are going to just be awesome for agriculture or a city district that's going to create a real a, a huge amount of really interesting jobs and create a lot of um, let's say consumer goods and then you'll have like foundry planets that do nothing more than create alloys for your um, your population. Um. As always, I like to expand uh, early, so I'm going to probably take expansion, although mining mining experts uh, station is pretty good too. A lot of the uh, traditions have been changed around, and I'm not going to go through all of them because it's gonna it'll be it'll take away from it. But either way, uh, the expansion is that we can. Um, of course, a development speed for our colony is great, and adopting all expansion. Uh, Traditions will allow us on non-habitable planets to build one additional district. In addition, we will unlock one ascension, uh, ascension perk, which is awesome. So yeah, there was a lot of information coming at you really quick, and uh, and the the crazy part about it this is that it all kind of kind of blends together really well. I I won't lie, and I mean I'm pretty sure that if you're on our forums, and I, if you don't, if you aren't, I encourage you to go to our Steam forums and check us out at Exploraminate. We have a lot of, um, there was a lot of worry, at least on my behalf, that once they, I started watching, of course, the, uh, no, I want that one. I'm going to get some society research. Society research is still, to this day, as it was in 2.0, much more difficult to find and uh, harvest in space. So you kind of have to make sure that if you're society research, you get an opportunity to definitely take it. But needless to say, I was um, a little concerned having watched so many of the, the you know, the dev diaries um, and the dev clash that they're doing right now, that a lot of times I felt um, that it wouldn't be a patch ready to go by December 6th. So I'm playing this before that, and I can honestly say that, not to say that it's, not, it's perfect, but I think it's actually going to be, it's going to launch a lot better than it um, than 2.0 did with the Apocalypse, because that came out... And it had some pretty rough jobs. Now, let's talk about buildings for a moment, if we shall. Buildings, you can see here, are unlocked by the amount of population that you have on your planet. So, when I was playing this, I kind of felt like it was uh, a cool mix of... I want to say a little bit like research. Because my districts are just building just your regular jobs, right? So you can see here that my population's growing, and as it starts to grow, it will... Uh, this my population will grow and automatically fill one of the job specializations a rule uh, except for ruler I believe well it could actually if it needed to I just never had that experience happen it seems like first colonists always end up being rulers but that being said it will fill empty job slots and and by growing its population right up to 75 it will unlock building categories which is great what do we got here 15 world oh we'll wait for it so it seems like growing your population initially seems like a really good idea because it will start to unlock it. But but if you build too quickly, 
you'll have the growing pains of uh, a demanding population. And that brings us kind of to where amenities work out. So amenities uh, are consumed by your population. And what happens is, if you grow too quickly, you won't have the right buildings to offset the amenities. So it's kind of a, a definitely a, a delicate balance that doesn't seem too completely out of whack for at least the time being. But I think we should build something. And what I like to do, of course, is we've got high amenities. 13 is quite high. So there are several different buildings here. Um, I think we're going to do an alloy upkeep because, of course, we always want to make sure that our ships are good to go. And since ships are needed, we're going to do it. So you can see here that the foundry converts minerals into alloys by two jobs. So we are going to build that. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to send you down this way and check out that black hole. I wonder if we get the worm in waiting. Can you imagine getting the worm in waiting this early in the game? <laughs> Just break it. Okay, so where should we go? Seems like that would be a good start because I think we're going to colonize that world right away. Another interesting thing, and I don't want to get too far off topic. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, I will bring it up to the shipyard. Colony ships now cost far more, and they're a huge investment. So you can see here they cost 200 food, 200 alloys, and 200 consumer goods. So it's a significant investment, and it also means that it's way harder to spam a huge amount right off the bat. Okay, so that's a, that's a no-brainer. Okay, wow, we're doing really good here. Uh, new colony start with an additional pop, because I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to get this thing going right away. It's a good starting location. And... Uh, and considering that we don't have to worry about empire colonies anymore, kind of being against their cap, it's actually empire districts. Early starts can be very, very powerful, <laughs> just as long as your economy can keep up. As you can see here, um, we're already having trouble with uh, energy credits. So it seems like that would be the, the best place to go. But needless to say... What's this? Careless pawning. According to the report of the crew of the ISS, Warrior, their mission was a failure. Huh. Well, at least the mineral shards would be somewhat done. It, basically what happens is we retrieve a sample from the cluster, resulting in a collision between the drone and mir um, a mineral cluster that, while mild, resulted in the mineral cluster breaking apart completely. Oh, that's too bad. Well, he's carefree trait, uh, and I want some minerals. So yeah, that's a, that is a no-brainer. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that we can't actually buy energy credits. The idea being is that it's kind of it's you use the energy credits to buy everything else, so it's not tradable. Oh no, I'm wrong. Sorry, you can sell minerals for energy credits. Just the way that it worked out, it's always kind of bases along using energy credits for buying or selling. My bad. Um, sure, well, let's have that anomaly. And so what do we got here? At the bottom of the screen here, you're going to see uh, the amount of districts that I have available left without um, taking any blockers out. And you'll notice that we have a current population, which is the blue kind of marker for the person, and then a blue marker with the little hard hat on. And that's the available jobs that we have. So uh, what's this here? The anomaly found close to Fear Mathros, however unlikely, appears to be a type of rift in space. It's possible the great mass of Fur Mathros somehow caused it, but the nature is beyond our understanding. The rift not only refracts and blocks light, but it seemed to actually draw it in and then push it out repeatedly, as if it was breathing photons. It is likely the immense gravitational pull of the rift has some point inhaled other things as well. We should exercise caution. Hmm. Well, what do you think? I think we should keep watch on it until we know more 
We'll figure out what's going on at a future time there. And the technology is discovered. Um, hard. How long is that going to take? It's going to take over a year. Mm, we're going to leave that for now. So you can see here we're back in the research screen and a lot of these research, almost everything in the research tree has been completely changed, including getting, you can see here, we got uh, eco simulation, which is a building and it basically increases farmers subsidies by 10% and unlocks an edict. So I don't think I'm really worried about our food right now. I think population growth is probably where we want to be. Uh, we've got lots of jobs. That's perfect. We're going to wait till we colonize another planet before talking about trade. I'll probably talk about it in the next episode because trade and luxury value actually is a big part of this game. And it's awesome. Alright, we've got another technology discovered. Engineering research. Uh, this is the one that you should all be taking very early. Oh wow, I mean such, this is what I love about Stellaris. I'm looking at these two going, okay, I get 10% from miners on my planet, or I get 10% output from in space and a nebula refinery. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do we have any nebulas? That's a real question. Doesn't look like we have any nebulas around us, so that's not going to really help us. So I think we're going to go for miners. That's awesome. Okay, everybody, so I'm kind of reaching to my limit. I am really excited to keep going and showing you guys all the other different things that we have to offer you, including our first colony, the immigration poll, and I think next episode we were going to talk about uh, trade value and how that kind of comes together and that interesting mechanic within trade. So this has been Explorminate for or this has been rb4 explorminate and uh, i hope you guys continue watching because i have a lot more to show you and i'm really excited to kind of kick this off and show the inters inters the idiosyncrasies of the new economy system so i will see you in the next episode